that word slips out. This time it was used by a Lib Dem peer on the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Baroness Hussein Iki twittered help. Trapped in a line in chaff land. Woman behind me explaining rearmost EastEnders plot to mate while eating largest bun I have ever seen. When challenged, she said she had not meant chav in any depreciatory way. Of course not. But take a look at the poisonous class hate point chav towns to see what lies beneath. She presumably no way say nigger or pocky, but chav is respectable class abuse by people asserting superiority over those they despise. Toxic class corrosiveness is so ordinary that our unborn king and his family played at dressing up and talking funny at a chat party mocking their lower class subjects. Wrapped inside this little word is the quintessence of Britain's great social fracture. Over the last 30 times the public monstering of a huge slice of the population by luckier, more paid people has come commonplace. This is language from the Edwardian period of uncontrolled snobbery. When safely reproduced in Downton Abbey, as the lady sniggering at the scullery maid or the squatter bullying his workers, we're encouraged to look back smugly as if these shocking class differences were long gone. The form and style may have changed, but the reality of extreme inequality and tone confident class disdain is back. That brief period between 1917 and 1979, when British wealth, pulsing in fear of revolution, ceded some power, occasion and plutocrat to the working classes is over. There's now no politics to express or admit the enormity of what has happened since the 1980s, how wealth and mortal respect drained from the bottom to enrich and glorify the top. Public perception of the shape of society has been so depraved that utmost no longer know how others live, where they stand in relation to the rest, who earns what or why. By deliberate misrepresentation, drip, drip, week after week, the important interests of wealth designedly distort reality. The stylish armament in the class armory fosters loathing of a feral underclass, its size vague and no way delineated, counting on stories of extreme dysfunction, of which any society has plenitude. One snicker cleverly elides millions of low-earning workers in equal chav disdain for all living on an estate, drawing any benefit, indeed if in work, as cheats, addicts and loafers. That is the way to divert resentment from those over, to those below. Then is a high illustration. On this quiet bank vacation weekend, Ian Duncan Smith's department deposited a dirty little non-story on the jellyfish of his favorite journals. Headline No More Defenses, the press release lists the 10 top worst defenses used by benefit cheats. They include I was not using the graduation to clean windows, I carried it for my bad reverse, and it was not me working, it was my identical twin.